Congratulations to Primoz Roglic on winning the 2023 Giro d'Italia. By doing so, Roglic becomes the first Slovenian to win the Giro in the race's history. As he celebrates deep into the Roman night with the Trofea Senza Fina, we ask the question, how did Primoz Roglic win the Giro d'Italia? Let's begin by getting one thing straight. Primoz Roglic is a phenomenon in himself. As a former ski jumper turned cyclist, the Giro was where he got his first opportunity to shine bright on the world stage. At this race in 2016, Primoz Roglic broke out with a stage win in a time trial. He returned in 2019 as the race favourite, and it all began well with the stage win on day one. He looked to be safe in pink, however, some wobbles in the final week of racing brought his Giro dreams tumbling down. With other Grand Tours in mind, the 2020 Tour de France saw one of cycling's greatest stories written by Primoz Roglic. Of course, I'm referring to the iconic Planche des Belfis stage, where Roglic crumbled on the climb and lost the yellow jersey on the final day of racing. In an attempt to overturn these errors, Roglic came back to the Tour in 2021 to win yellow. The Tour de France dream that year, though, was derailed by a nasty crash in the first week of racing. A month later, however, he won Olympic gold. In 2022, crashes plagued his season once more. First at the Tour de France, then at La Vuelta. With his leadership status in jeopardy, fans were losing faith in the ever-cursed Primoz Roglic. However, in 2023, he put these woes behind him, beginning the season with a surprise appearance at Tirreno Adriatico. There, Roglic roglified the race, winning three stages in the overall classification. Later that month, Roglic would win the Tour of Catalonia, defeating the world champion Remco Evenepoel on the roads of Spain. With this, all the talk at the beginning of the Giro was about Primoz Roglic and Remco Evenepoel. The two held superstar status, already having been stars of the Vuelta over the past years. Both had their own specific narratives and long stories to getting here in tip-top form at the Giro, and it was bound to be an epic battle on the roads of Italy. However, they weren't the only contenders. We had other favourites, including Theo Gegenhardt, Alexander Vlasov, Joao Almeida, and Geraint Thomas. However, before the race even started, Primoz Roglic's team of Jumbo Visma had problems. Crashes, COVID, and injuries forced the team to be reshuffled at the last minute. Half of the team was substituted in within two weeks of the race's beginning. In fact, Tom Glogue was flown out to Italy just mere hours before the race began in Abruzzo. With a Frankenstein team for Jumbo Visma, the Giro preparations were unfavorable. Nevertheless, Roglic began the Giro in Abruzzo with confidence. With a strong time trial performance on stage one, Roglic entered top 10. However, his rival Remco Evenepoel ripped up the course to take an emphatic stage win, placing himself 43 seconds in front of Roglic. After a calm opening week, the race hit the mountains at Gran Sasso d'Italia on stage seven. The battle there was somewhat of a stalemate. Neither Remco nor Roglic made an attack. Instead, they rolled home together with the other GC favorites. The next day at Fossombrana, however, Roglic gambled. On the final climb of the day, Roglic placed a typical attack in his style, and he put time into Remco Evenepoel. However, the Slovenian brought forward with him the British double act from Ineos Grenadiers, Geraint Thomas and Theo Gegenhardt. Rolling over the line together, Roglic gained a fair 14 seconds on Remco Evenepoel and Joao Almeida. With this, Roglic moved closer to pink, but the time gaps were still sizable to both Remco Evenepoel and the breakaway race leader Andreas Legnesen. Into stage 9 and Roglic had the chance to test out his own time trialing legs. At the beginning of the time trial, Roglic was in panic stations, looking weak on the day. However, in limiting his losses, he shed just 17 seconds to Remco Evenepoel and Geraint Thomas. With this, Roglic sat in third place in GC at 47 seconds back. After the stage, however, news broke in the late hours of Sunday, May 14th, that the race leader Remco Evenepoel had tested positive for COVID-19. This was shocking news for the race, given that only a couple of hours before, Remco took the stage win and the pink jersey. In response, Geraint Thomas became the race leader, just two seconds ahead of Primoz Roglic. Into the second week of the Giro, and headlines were all about the bad weather. Rain, cold, and wind battered the peloton as they made their way into northern Italy. On the wet roads of Tuscany on stage 11, Ineos and Jumbo Visma were, were rattled by a crash involving Geraint Thomas, Primoz Roglic, and Theo Gegenhardt, the latter of whom was forced to abandon the race. For Roglic, he lost skin on his leg and seemed bashed by the incident. In response to the incident, Primoz Roglic told the press, You can see I have still some meat out, so uh, yeah. 
uh, we take a shower and uh, yeah, I'm still here, so okay. Uh. Luckily, the stages to come were more tame and gave Roglic the chance to heal. With a shortened stage up to Kranz Montana, Roglic looked to have recovered and arrived home with the pink jersey Geraint Thomas and his teammate Sepp Kuss. Whilst Borno MAI took the race lead from Geraint Thomas from the breakaway, the GC teams allowed Groupama to do most of the work on stage 15 to Bergamo. Despite a late roll of the dice from Almeida and Roglic, no GC gaps were showing. Instead, they would have to wait for the more dramatic final week of the Giro through the Alps and Dolomites to make the difference. The Giro was still to be won. Into the final week we go, and Almeida, Roglic and Thomas were ready for a rumble. On stage 16's mountain stage up to Monte Bondone, it looked like the first chance for GC blood to be drawn. On that day, Jumbo Visma set a hard pace, challenging the other favourites. On the final climb of the day, Roglic was wrestled out of touch by Jay Vine and Joao Almeida of UAE, who smelt blood in the water. In response, Almeida attacked with Garrett Thomas, testing Roglic and the American teammate Sepp Kuss behind. As Kuss and Roglic limited their losses, they came home 25 seconds behind the winning duo of Almeida and Thomas. This pushed Roglic down into third place in GC, whilst Thomas took the pink jersey back from Brunei Mai of France. With this wobble on stage 16, people were starting to doubt Primoz Roglic and write him off. But if there's one thing we know about Roglic, it's never write him off. That said, he came back to fight on stage 18 to Val di Zoldo, attacking away on the penultimate climb of the day. With the help once again of Sepp Kurs, Roglic put time into Almeida. Thomas, though, was fixed onto Roglic's wheel. By challenging Almeida on the final climb, Roglic and Thomas put time into the Portuguese rider, and Roglic himself moved up into second in GC, but his time gap remained unchanged to Garrett Thomas, now 29 seconds behind. After these mountain stages, it was hard to imagine anybody dropping Garrett Thomas at this Giro. However, on stage 19's tough stage to Trecime Lavaredo, anything was possible. Whilst Ineos controlled affairs, Jumbo waited to pounce. Timing the move to perfection, Roglic attacked, bringing forward Garrett Thomas once again. Almeida was behind, and Roglic felt confident enough to attack and keep the pressure going. Into the tough final kilometre of the climb, the two dueled, with Thomas initially dropping Roglic before Roglic came back and attacked over the top, gaining a decisive three-second gap on the line. Although the three seconds gained by Roglic seemed like nothing, it was a huge psychological boost for Primoz. This was in fact the first time that Roglic had gained time on Thomas at a road stage at this judo. Now sitting 26 seconds behind Garrett Thomas in the GC standings, Primoz Roglic was in a comfortable position coming into the final stage of the Giro. However, he would need to believe in himself once more if he wanted to overturn this 26 second gap. With the Slovenian border just 5 kilometers away from the summit of the final climb of stage 20's individual time trial, this stage seemed like a homecoming party for Primoz Roglic. However, the party was somewhat overshadowed in the run-up by flashbacks to 2020. There, Roglic crumbled on a similar mountain time trial at the 2020 Tour de France, resulting in a dramatic loss of the yellow jersey just hours before the Tour de France closed in Paris. With all of this context, this anxiety weighed heavy on many. However, the context was very different here. Roglic had aged, he learned. If anyone were to battle against this anxiety, it would be Primoz, who's come back from so many setbacks in his career. So with the stage set, the time trial was underway. After the opening 10 kilometers of flatland of the time trial, Roglic was ahead of his rival Geraint Thomas, but only by two seconds. Coming on to the climb, Thomas and Roglic looked to be fairly close in timings. However, Roglic was being serenaded by Slovenian fans all the way up Monte Lasari. Halfway up the climb, we got our first time check on the mountain, and Roglic was the quickest. By the time Garrett Thomas came to the time check, he was 16 seconds slower than Roglic. However, up the road, disaster strikes for Primoz Roglic. There's a problem with his bike and he stops riding on the brutal slopes of Monte Lasari. He waits a couple of seconds for his mechanic to help him and push him away, but Roglic is losing vital seconds in the pink jersey fight. For a moment, it looked as though the pink jersey fight was over. Roglic lost momentum, seconds, and the fight for pink. 
Regardless of this setback, Roglic kept on believing and fighting for seconds. In a stage that will go down in the history books as the miracle of Montelassari, Primoz Roglic overcame these mechanical woes to fight all the way to the top of the climb. With the roars of the Slovenian supporters on the side of the road, Roglic sealed the stage win, overcoming all these problems and smashing the time set by Joao Almeida. All that was left was to wait. Thomas was looking cooked, jersey unzipped and wobbling. The British rider was losing time. With the clock ticking, Thomas had missed his chance, rolling across the line 40 seconds down on the stage, meaning that Roglic had gained enough time on the stage to overturn his deficit and win the Giro d'Italia. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! 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 With a gap of 14 seconds, it was enough for Roglic to clinch onto the Trofeo Senza Fina. The trophy was his, the Giro was his, the Malia Rosa was Slovenian. At Monte Lasari, we witnessed a miracle. Despite a mechanical problem, a crash on stage 11, a depleted Jumbo Visma squad, Primoz Roglic had won the Giro d'Italia in 2023. This goes to show one thing, belief is a powerful thing, and Primoz Roglic kept on believing. All that was left for Roglic on stage 21 was to roll home safely into Rome. With Prosecco flowing and smiles all around at Jumbo Visma, the dream was sealed. Primoz Roglic had finally, finally won the Giro d'Italia. And with that, that's the story of how Primoz Roglic had won the 2023 Giro. That takes us to the end of our Giro retrospective video, charting how Primoz Roglic won this year's Corsa Rosa. We hope you join us in saying congratulations or cestitam to Primoz Roglic from Slovenia on winning this great race. Otherwise, you can stay tuned here on the Cycling Dane channel and subscribe. We have more post-Giro content coming very soon, as well as our preparation for the Tour de France. Also, comment down below what your memories are of this Giro d'Italia. Where were you when the miracle of Monte Lasari happened? Let me know down below. Well, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you around.